Wepa, what I mean, this is your boy, I'm going to welcome to a brand new conversation special. Who is one of those geek fresh stories right here? We're about to speak to an amazing creative duo. They got this fire film that is touring right now with my homie show, Geek Fest, Full Fest, right now this year, called Higher Ground. No, it ain't about we either, right? It's because it says higher in it. How dare you guys think that way? Check this out. This creative team is dope. We're about to get into their origin story, the pro man, and a whole lot more. Let me introduce Mr. Joe Kramer and Christian. That's enough with his last name. <laughs> what up, fellas? How you guys doing? Welcome very good home. introduction. Hey. Thank you very much. Well, you guys rock. I mean, Higher Ground is a fire film. I mean, laugh and having curious. And wow, a lot of uh, beautiful young ladies there. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm sure you know about it. It's okay. Uh, all right, it's all right. Uh, it's, you know, I was like, wow, this is funny. Even aliens feel our ladies. I, I could understand. Oh, well, what do you do? So let's get this done, kiddos. A quick introduction to you guys. Big Joe Kramer, talk to me about yourself, where you're originally from. And most importantly, this is what everybody needs to know as we dive in, you know, later on to what, the, what are the early origins of your fandom? Um, do you specifically mean film? No, what was whatever it was, what is it that got you like a fish for you to then start diving into a greater world? The initial thing that got you started overall in pop culture, whether it be music, cards, comics, TV, whatever. Uh, it would definitely, I guess, be uh, film. I'm originally from Philadelphia. Uh, are you an I English fan? No, I'm not. Ah, okay, but good, good. Thank you, thank you. Is. Right. So, yeah, there's, more, there's more of a neutral party. He's like Switzerland. Oh, oh, great, great. You know, so great that I chose Joe first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I just remember, I remember being a very young age and, uh, you know, being obsessed with, uh, in the late 80s, the Ghostbusters cartoon and the movie. And, um, Wait. Which Ghostbusters? The original Ghostbusters or Ghostbusters from the film? Because remember, at that era, as a kid, there was two different Ghostbusters cartoons. The different real from... Ghostbusters. Okay. All right. Bet. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Okay. We got it. Folks, if you don't believe me, look it up. There was one that had a, a like a gorilla or a monkey in it, right? I, was... <laughs> I, was like, I know wow. what you're talking about. Yeah, right? <laughs> Not the one I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bet. OG folks, like the one we know, traditional. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, what was it about it that got you hooked, though? God, I don't know. I was two, three years old. I mean, I, I I couldn't tell you, though. I can tell you that as an adult, I still think that that movie is so well done and so funny uh, and actually kind of was somewhat visually of an inspiration on this film that we're going to talk about today. Fantastic. All right, my man Christian, uh, talk to me about yourself. Uh, where are you OG from? And very same question, what are the early origins of your fandom? Uh, I'm from Philadelphia as well. That's uh, where and how Joe and I met and where we're working and where we made this. Um, as far as my fandom, I think I also started uh, what drew me in is cartoons generally. Uh, I think probably the thing that first kind of uh, com comics and cartoons, I think uh, comic strips specifically, I think the first thing that got its like hooks into me was um, Charles Schultz and Peanuts comics and stuff like that. And um, and so that's like uh, the all the TV specials and also the all the I had so many books of those strips and that kind of um, that inspired and kind of like influenced i think on my end of things the the cartoonish element that i think is really kind of loud and consistent through uh higher grounds which we're gonna we're talk about in a few minutes oh absolutely because it's definitely a fire film so all right so talk to me then about just your 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 early ages and in the geekdom were you kind of lone wolves gentlemen did you have tribes you know i'll continue with christian and then go to joe so christian were you alone in your geekdom you know, early on in life, you know, ha having to keep it quiet and like, uh, and, and not meet people later on, or, or did you have a cool tribe? Uh, it didn't. Well, I don't necessarily think I was all that quiet with it. It might not, that might not have been something that was, uh, 
uh, a necessity imposed on myself. Maybe I might have benefited from that, but no, it was it was uh, I, I was pretty just kind of like neutral with it. I don't necessarily think that I wasn't really like a, like a convention person as a kid. Like I wouldn't, right. I didn't really like latch onto a group and like and build a, a community out of it. I just kind of like had some friends with similar interests and. Um, uh, there, I, I have a, a buddy now who does, uh, stand up in LA and we would just kind of like spend really any time all throughout school, uh, just drawing comic strips together. And, um, and, uh, we kind of had to be like separated from, for like 10 years. We could never really be in the same class after second grade because we were never really like listening. We were always kind of like drawing. You know what? Christian, just looking at you, you look like a troublemaker, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you so long hair. Tro- yeah, man, yeah, you, man, you were calling trouble in school, man. Yeah. I, I what, what about you, Joe? Did you have a tribe growing up, you know, along with your geekdom, you, you know, by yourself within the family or, or just, you know, were you a, a lone wolf? If you were? Uh, so I, I was an only child, so uh, I didn't have, like, siblings that I would uh, kind of be into that stuff with, but... Yeah, I always had friends that were into similar things. And I uh, I always felt like, oh, this kind of like nerdy, I guess, stuff that we're into, this is the shit that's actually cool. And anyone who doesn't get that doesn't get it. They're missing out. So I never felt any kind no. of uh, uh, no. need to uh, hide that or any way or play it down or, or anything like that. That's why I asked this very question, because there are some that, you know, hit it, some that don't. But, you know, you, you hit it on the head. That's what it is. Just be you. And if you find people like, oh, shit, well, you know what? This isn't bad. Yeah, everybody likes everybody's a bit nerdy in life. Everybody, <laughs> even the biggest thug in the world has their soft little nerd spot that, <laughs> oh, shit, well, don't tell nobody. I'll beat you up type shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. You know, Christian was already alluding to it, but what's the story of the pro man? So we, how did you guys hook up, get together to build stories together? Like, how did that even happen? How, how did your energy sink? Uh, we, so we were both uh, freelance filmmakers, uh, directors, shooters, editors, and we met by both uh, working with a local production company here in Philly called Boathouse Pictures, Um, both shooting, both editing for them, and kind of just hit it off and realized that we had a similar sense of humor. And I had released a short film that I had written and directed that uh, did surprisingly well online. It was chosen for a Vimeo staff pick. Uh, What? Was it your first? It no, it was not. I started making films when I was about twelve years old. So this was twelve. Oh my yeah. god, Joe Kramer with no white hairs is a veteran in the game. Baby. <laughs> don't be so sure. I don't have any white hairs. <laughs> oh, he died. He, are you admitting you die on air, Rob? <laughs> Everybody tells me, you know, I like I wear a black hat, but I ain't dying much. <laughs> right. Uh, so after that, I knew I wanted to uh, I wanted to try to take the momentum of the press that that short film had gotten, and I wanted to write a feature. And I just knew I didn't want to do it by myself. I thought that having a writing partner would bring something else into the mix. And I was thinking, well, who would I like to write this with? And because we seem to have similar tastes and similar senses of humor, I thought of Christian without knowing if he even was a writer or not. Uh, and I and I went to him and I said, hey, I have this idea for a feature. Uh, are you a writer? Would you be interested in writing with me? And he said, yeah, I am a writer, actually. I like went to school for English uh, literature, and I would love to do it with you. And that kind of kicked off this partnership that 10 years later is still going. All right, so Christian, has he lied in any way? And let me ask you, did you flip when he asked you where you're writing? Did you say, fuck it? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that better as a story. Um, uh, so I want to agree with it. But no, that was uh, that's that's always been an interest of mine. Virtually everybody Good. in my family is a writer. And um, and yeah, it was a, it was a question I liked hearing and answering. I it's a it's it's been a it's it's I was actually at that time kind of having similar thoughts thinking like I there's a lot of ideas that I have that I feel like it it 
it, I would benefit from having someone to kind of like flesh these out with and like bounce them off with. And it's also just, it's, it's universally, I think, uh, beneficial to work with a writing or production partner. If for no other reason, then it gives you a sense of accountability to kind of, uh, see through projects or ideas that you kind of are, are brainstorming or kicking around in your head. So did you have prior experience before Joe uh, approached you in, in regards to how he approached you with that type of, uh, you know, in, endeavor? As Joe said, yeah, we were both uh, independently uh, uh, writers, editors, shooters, filmmakers. Okay. Yeah. And um, but yeah, it was uh, it's I, I feel like a sort of a, a joint forces element that's been paying dividends ever since. Oh, fantastic, folks. We're about to get into it. Oh, mm. my God, because we have a trailer about mm. what's touring on Geek Fest. I'm going to show you some links where you could peep it because this is what the most important part is that you guys need to vote for this when you go <laughs> out there. So this is fire. Check it out. This is the Higher Ground trailer. Enjoy. Expert leg work. Field drones like yourselves is absolutely critical to the success of this method. And if you miss this one, You'll never get another one to last me. Well, there we go, there we go. So, Chris, you definitely, I don't know how I feel buying from a store from you. I probably tip you every time. Like, you look so sad working in the shop. <laughs> and, and, and Joe, that fucking makeup, god damn, yo. Talk about it. Talk about this film, the conception of it. How did this even happen? How, you know, who was it? Was it shrooms? Was it weed? Or was it the ion light? <laughs> Oh, did you? Do we? Do we lose well, Joe? Joe seems to be muted. But go ahead, Chris. Okay. Uh, so, how did this start? Uh, is the question. Um, I guess how how was that? I th this particular idea, um, Joe. It was uh, you were approached right to um, to we had to come up with an idea for uh, an anthology movie, right? For uh, that was like, yeah sci fi based. What, so what happened is we, so I released that short film. We started working on a feature length script that was unrelated that we were doing. And as we were in the process of doing that, I was approached by a producer who wanted to put together an anthology film and wanted to know if uh, I would be interested in uh, writing and directing, contributing a piece to this film. And we thought about that idea and we thought, well, it's going to take a while to finish writing this feature. Maybe we table that for a moment and let's see if we can kick up any ideas that might be good for a short and produce that in the meantime. And we started talking and somehow, uh, you know, we had a complete blank canvas in front of us and we came up with this idea of this sci-fi comedy about the day that we as earthlings make contact with aliens and we think that these aliens are going to come down and solve all of our earthly problems, our political problems, climate problems. Uh, they're, they're going to kind of fix everything for us because they're so enlightened. And it turns out that they're kind of, these just these like blue collar working class dudes who have been sent here to blow up the planet because that's what movie aliens do. And in the process of doing that, one of them sees this barista and he's instantly smitten with her. And he decides, if I can get this girl's number, I'll keep my partner from blowing up this planet because it's the only one she can live on. And if I can't get it, then I guess he'll go ahead with the plan and we'll blow up this planet and then we'll go home. So oh, wow. it kind of like ultimately becomes about like the fate of the world rests on a guy getting a girl's number, which is, I think, what that often feels like to many people. So, especially to us dudes, especially of a certain age, you're trying to get out there, Mac again. You know, that's why I felt the <laughs> film. I was like, wow, if these aliens could do it, so can Al Mega. <laughs> I'm glad we inspired you. The movie <laughs> inspired me because let me tell you, I, I would be smitten to, uh, but, but goddamn, to, to, to place the fate of the world <laughs> on a young lady giving you her 
digits, <laughs> as we used to say back in the day. Oh my God, bro! I mean, I, I I honestly think I would fail miserably, and you know, I'm sorry, world. I'm sorry. That <laughs> alien got more game than I do. Right. <laughs> so. So what, what 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 was it also you know again because you guys don't only just produce you're also part of the film and all how 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 was all that partaking and you know being a part of the film making the film building the team you know what was that journey like exhausting <laughs> <laughs> a big part of the motivation there uh, was um, it, it just we also self financed this so it really just kept the cost down like well, was... <laughs> truly independent baby right, celebrate yeah. salute yo. Well, salute, man. That, that's, what, that's what I love. The people like you that, you know what? I believe in the dream and I'm going to do it. You know, do it. It'll pay off, kiddos. You know, God is good. The energy and the vibe is there because this film is absolutely funny. Uh, I think the characters, everybody you put in the film, you know, it flowed so well. I, I could actually see hear. this. Thank you. I could actually see this more as a sitcom, though, with these mm -hmm. motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Because well, you, you, you trying to you. mac around the world. Aliens macking around the world. <laughs> And every time I get a number, that's one more year that Earth's life gets extended. That's right. Right. Yeah. You. I mean, you mentioned you were asking <laughs> earlier about like what's the what was the impetus for the story? Like yeah. what's kind of started off. We're really uh, one of the ways. Really, like how we started working together was we were making enough jokes uh, that were pulling from the same references that kind of had the same tone around. Uh, a sort of uh, Larry David, Seinfeld, Curb Your Enthusiasm, like very like grounded human uh, relationship based. Real topic. shit. Yeah, I love so Larry we were David, interested, man. Yeah, We were interested in telling one of those kinds of stories with a really like colorful, like genre, sci-fi, uh, like kind of cartoony dressing. Uh, so, something that feels very like uh, heightened and, and zany, but also grounded in its subject matter uh you we we were kind of fortunate enough to wind up being able to get uh, a recurring and we think very like iconically funny uh role from seinfeld within uh within higher grounds as well uh he uh john o'hurley he was in the trailer uh, yeah. who plays Lane's boss, Jay Peterman. And that, that was something that we were really, really excited about, being able to sort of like marry those two kind of themes. How did you even land that? I mean, you know, build, building the cast, how did you even go through that? Uh, Kristen, who was our lead uh, lead actress, Kristen Vaganis, they had worked together on a, on a commercial out in LA. And so that was our oh, cool. kind of uh, ability to get the sort of the project in front of them. We built the film with the goal of getting a recognizable face to cameo in that part. So we oh, shot God. everything. I cut it all together, color graded it. We did all the sound mixing, got it like inches from the finish line so that we could then send that around to potential actors to fill that role. Uh, through Kristen, we got that almost finished product to John O'Hurley. Uh, he really liked it and his agent really liked it. They responded very positively to it and said, yeah, uh, he said, I'd like to be a part of this. And it was oh. like a one day shoot in LA. And yeah, then we that, just kind of plugged that into what we had and the film was done. Oh man, I can't imagine the excitement of, uh, you know, somebody like that saying yes, you know, to, to join the, this project. I mean, again, it definitely made me smile. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> that was one of those moments. Oh, shit, what? Oh, man, these guys, these guys you know, joke, baby. You, you're getting some, some kind of stuff here. I, I dig it. So um, how did you guys hook up with Geek Fest, you know, and put it on this particular tour as well? Uh, so we've uh, earlier last year we screened as well with uh, the one of the first glance festivals out of Philly and okay. uh, the the head programmer and founder of that festival this is uh, Geek Fest is another one of his initiatives yeah. and so yeah big uh, Bill O baby <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I locked it I really liked I thought it was such a cool idea that uh, I'd never seen something like that to partner a, a film festival and have it touring with a lot of different conventions yes. and I don't know that's something I wanted to jump onto. Would, would you guys be attending any of these cons? We could meet you guys in person, you know? What's there's up? actually, there's supposed to be one in Philly. I would love to go to that one. Yeah, and it be in Paris the weekend that it's... The oh, really? I didn't even know the date of it. Yeah, oh, it's my, in early yeah. May. 
Oh, Look man. at this guy. I'm going to be in, in, in <laughs> Le Paris and I cannot attend. You know, with his big year, we almost said this. I'm going to be in Le Paris. <laughs> but I hope that we, I would love for us to get to another one at some other. It, I think it runs throughout the year. Oh, okay. it, does, it does. It does run throughout the year. And you got, you know, we would love to, to, to gauge your energy in person, see you at these events. You know what I mean? Because we need the filmmakers to attend it too. That way, you know. You know what? You're gonna skew some votes your way, most likely. Come on, yeah, right? a good uh, friend of mine is a is a comic book uh, writer who's who's at a lot of these things year round, and so I had him send me a bunch of different ones that weren't on the list that Bill has there, and so I forwarded them. I'm hoping to at least at least this list can get longer, so we can go to a couple. Yeah, you you guys gotta go. So uh, so talk about uh the, the future then. What's popping? In are you gonna expand upon this? Oh, are there new ideas, you know, on the horizon? What's going on in, in, in you guys' universe? We, uh, so we wrote this one to work as a standalone short film, but also to work as a pilot for a potential series. So we've written uh, an outline for a first season based on this pilot, uh, an awesome. additional five episodes. We're really happy with uh, where that story goes from here. We would love to try to get those produced. We're also just wrapping up the uh, unrelated feature length script that I was initially talking about. And we're outlining a script for another unrelated short that we want to shoot this summer or fall. So we kind of have a few things up in the air at the moment. Gotcha. And if, if you were to release this as a series, I mean, is there uh, you want to do a streaming, traditional networking, you know, online? Like, what what's the attack for 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 higher grounds? Because I really think this has so much potential. Because it, it is extremely entertaining. The concepts are there. I mean, everybody's talking. About, I mean, you hitting stuff at the right times with all all the stuff and topics you guys were talking about. This, this, Folks, I ain't talking shit. You just watch me. This conversation is the proof, baby. Honest to God, you gotta watch this. I think this is actually gonna get a lot of people's attention uh, on the geek fest circuit that, that is so great much. to hear thank you very very much yeah I, I there are a lot of kind of um <laughs> end of the world neuroses feelings that are that are present throughout the story <laughs> yeah. that we uh i guess hope offer a little bit of levity to the heavy topic but um yeah uh we like like i said we produced that one financed it totally independently uh which we could wouldn't be sustainable for five more episodes so it's really uh, if if we get any partners that um, that uh, that wanted to uh, uh, bolster that production a, a bit, uh, it would really just wherever the di the distribution avenues took it from there, that's where we would go. So let's manifest, baby, manifest. Right, yeah. Let's go. You're hearing it. We're putting that to the world. <laughs> this needs to be streaming somewhere so Netflix, Hulu, Disney, whomever. No, not right. Disney. That's all Whoever the will pay. Too much. <laughs> Disney will pay you. Yeah, but, that's but the short I, answer. Anyone who wants to pay for yeah, it, then they right. can have it. Yeah, yeah. but I, listen, but I want you to have a little bit more creative freedom. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Please. I mean, they won't release, uh, what, what was that? Bound by Honor. That's a Disney movie. If you oh, yeah. it. <laughs> it's in their vault. It's a Disney right. movie, but they won't re-release it because it doesn't fit within their brand. Because if anybody's seen vault, that movie, they? Oh yeah, because if yeah. you've seen that movie, this is not definitely <laughs> their brand. <laughs> Jailhouse nineties, yeah, nah. Vatos yeah. Locos Forever, no, not 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 their brand. All right. <laughs> so yeah. All right. So take it. So advice. This is advice time. So I'll start with a question here. Um, you know, for, for people out there just trying to uh, learn, navigate the game and put their best game, best foot forward out there. How, how would you say that that, you know, just in your opinion, in your experience, you know, what what are some steps? take i mean kind of to, to echo what i was saying a little bit earlier find someone who you creatively click with uh who you you find that you you tend to want to make the same sort of things and link up with them because those are the kinds of people that will keep you accountable to if you say you wanted to do something and you make plans to meet on a thursday night or a saturday morning or something just to to get the ball rolling on hashing out the idea, then you know you have to do it. You can't really make up an excuse for, oh, I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling uh, a little scattered or busy. No, you already made plans. You got to sit down and figure it out, and the work will just be better for it. 
Yeah, I feel like writing is hard. It's just a hard thing to do. And so much of it is kind of just like banging your head against the wall, trying to trying to make something happen. And when you're doing that by yourself, it's so easy to just kind of let the inertia take over and and never actually get anywhere. If you're accountable to somebody else, it just forces you to make something happen. Dig it. Dig it. And Big Joe, before we go, I do want to say something here. Sure. I got to compliment those posters on your wall. What's up? Where are, yeah. those, are those OGs or, or what? Are you a collector? What's going on here? No, those are just prints, but they're just okay. favorite movies of mine. All right, but La Dolce Vida, Dr. No. I can't see the one behind you. The other that one. is uh, Jules and Jim, the Francois Truffaut movie. All right, bet, bet, bet. Out of those three, if somebody needs to get off the podcast right now and they need to watch one of those three films, which is the one you say they need to watch right now out of the three? La Dolce Vida might be my favorite film. I mean, it's certainly top three, so I would have to go with that one. I think it's absolutely phenomenal, and every time I go back to it, it uh, affects me differently. So I would ask Christian, you know, he, with all with that shelf of mighty books, <laughs> like, 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 what's the hottest book on that shelf, in your opinion? Oh boy, Green Eggs and Ham, I right. think. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Oh, um, the Hansel and Gretel. What we got? What, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is. I mean, if we're gonna go back to um. Uh, a recurring theme of this. This is a, a a comic artist that I really, really love. It's a graphic novel by um, Chester Brown. Uh, oh, okay. He's done a lot of really incredible stuff. I don't know if he's ever been on any of the the tours that um, that you guys have done oh. uh, or any of the festivals that you partnered with. But um, yeah, he's like a really uh, a really great graphic novelist that I, I can't speak more highly of. He's out of Montreal, I believe. Oh, great. Look at that. Putting on, both of you putting on our people to some new stuff, I'm sure. You know what I mean? I know I have some pros that watch this, but for me, La Dolce Vida, I definitely did not watch. I was not aware of that book, so I'm definitely going to be looking into that. I dig it. See, we both, we all win and learn here in the Comic <laughs> Status Festival, baby. I dig it. So, folks, I've been showing this nonstop. You can people just look over here at Vimeo. Just look up Big Joe Kramer right there to check out the website at Kramer Visual. Dot com, you heard, and of course, on the IG, on the gram, <laughs> you go visit Joe at Kramer. Dot visual and and listen here so you can know Christian's last name. I know so rude of me, I'm so sorry. You can uh, go to C, uh, what Sar 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 Sarkis, Sarkis is my middle gram. name, Sarkis Gram, Graham, Graham wait, on the gram. Wait, 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 so Sarkis is, is, is the middle name, it's my middle name. name, yeah, it's my middle what? name. Where did that come from? What's the origin of Sarkis? It's Armenian. It's Armenian. It mm -hmm. sounds like definitely a comic book warrior that wears trunks and carries a big sword. <laughs> I might have to use that then. That'll be but my like that, though. Though. Yeah. See, Sarkis Graham on the Graham, baby. But to show mm -hmm. that love, you know, support independent. You heard it here, folks. These are two amazing independent creators that went out of pocket to create this great film. If y'all missed the trailer, just give it a rewind. But even better, go visit the website. Go visit the Vimeo, but also go check out Geek Fest, Film Fest. Stay up to date so you can check out where they're touring right now. All right. So you could then make that appointment, hit that panel room. Because listen, you know, we people of certain age sometimes got to sit down after walking all day at a con. And Geek Fest, Film Fest serves that purpose to sit down and just enjoy some dope films by amazing different creators, such as these two gentlemen right here. So, Please sort of love. I mean, we need more people supporting these guys because these guys are, in fact, the future of entertainment. As you heard, hopefully we're going to, not hopefully, we will be getting this. Manifest, baby, on a streaming network real soon, and we're <laughs> going to make it happen. And with that, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Christian. And thank you, my fellow Crusaders, for hanging out with me today. Hasta la próxima. Much love. Wepa! Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this Come Crusaders production. For real-time news on all things pop culture, please feel free to follow us on social media. For articles, original content, merchandise, and more, 
please go to www.comiccrusaders.com. Also follow along with all of the websites of the Comic Crusaders family. As always, if you like this content, please click like and subscribe to the Comic